purposes, but they were also created to serve and worship. Hebrews 1.14 teaches us angels were created to be ministering spirits. Amen. To serve God and the people of God. In the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 8, John fell down at the feet of an angel who had brought him a revelation from God. And the angel quickly lifted him up and told him, worship God alone. That's right. And throughout the scriptures, whenever human beings began to worship angels, they were immediately instructed by those heavenly emissaries to worship God alone. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, and you, and you too. That angels are not to be worshipped, for they were created to give God endless worship. Far right. ah, from wanting to worship angels, delight, they, they revel, they rejoice, they relish the opportunity to praise and worship Almighty God. The psalm writer in Psalm 148 verse 2 recognized that and exhorted the angels saying, Praise God, all you angels. Angels worship God on a full-time basis. Not just for a couple of hours on Sunday morning. <laughs> angels worship God on a full-time basis. In fact, Job 38, verse 4. We talked about this in Bible study last week. It tells us that angels were created before the earth was formed. God asked Job in that text, Where were you, Job, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you understand who set the earth's measurements. Since you know who laid its cornerstone. And then verse 7, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, where were you? The text points out that when the earth was made, the angels formed a choir and celebration. And now, why did they do that? Because God had hung the earth in faith. Yeah. No, not all. The, the angels rejoiced because of what God was Trust going to do on earth. Yeah. That God had created and hung in the space while uh, this bulb and this globe that we call earth. While the angels did not know the details of redemption, they did know that God, being God, somehow, some way, the God of redemption was going to defeat the demonic rebels and vindicate his righteousness. Yes. That's why we can say today that he set the captives free. Right. And I got to park on that curve long enough to tell somebody that you don't always need to know the details of what God is going to do. Yes. Or how God is going to work things out. Or when God is going to do it before you praise and worship God. Sometimes you need to praise and worship God on the basis of your expectation. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm expecting. I don't have the details yet, but I'm expecting. I can't see this thing and how it's going to work out, but I still believe and I wonder if I have just about 12 people in worship service who know how to praise God. You, you, gotta, you just on the basis of what God has promised you. Yes. You ain't got to see it to believe it. To expect it is enough. Oh, yes. Angels are created beings. And secondly, the text teaches us that angels are spirit beings. Let the whole church say spirit beings. Spirit beings. Hebrews 1.14 asks a question about angels. Are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? See now, the demon demonic spirits uh, on earth, uh, they worship God too. See, 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 the whole idea is that they recognize who Jesus is too. Now, don't you remember the demons in the text where it says that they, 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 they recognize who Jesus was? And so it ain't just enough for us to recognize Jesus was because demons recognize Jesus and they have to bow down and 
worship him too. It's our job while we're here on earth is to tell somebody else about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I wish I had a witness this morning. Somebody who had a saying to praise God. That's why Paul points out in Ephesians 6 and 12 that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Smile at your neighbor and say, you ain't got to fight me no more. <laughs> yeah. That's not where the warfare is. We are fighting a spiritual war. Angels are spiritual intangible, invisible beings, and yet, by the power of God, get this, they can take on visible form to complete sovereignly directed supernatural activity while here on earth. Y'all might have missed that, but I'm going to get you on the rewrite. You might not believe me, but you ought to believe your Bible. If you jaywalk over to Genesis chapter 18, there Abraham welcomed three strangers into his tent. This is what theologians call a theophany. Everybody say theophany. theophany. Yeah. Now that's a 50-cent word that means uh, the appearance of divinity in human form. And these angelic visitors who showed up and Abraham's tent announced to Sarah that despite the fact that she was post-menopausal, almost 90 years old, and her husband was pre-viagral, uh, y'all get that on the call, almost 100 years old, that despite those odds, she was going to have a baby. And Sarah did. Just what you did, she laughed. But God did not just promise this to them because despite their advanced age, God made a way out of no way. And Sarah had a baby. Just like God said. Can I pause right there just to shout on my own? Because only God can make a way out of no way. All right, all right. I dare you to touch somebody and say, I know that's right. Yeah, I know that's right. And don't you ever forget, no matter how it looks, no matter how it appears, no matter how great the odds, no matter what people say, no matter what they prognosticate, no matter how they talk, no matter how much they lie, only God can make a way out of no way. All right, all right, all right. said it, that he will do it, it will surely come to pass. Oh, yeah. If God promised it, you can go home and you can go to sleep on that. You ain't even got to worry about that no more. You ain't got to discuss it with nobody. You ain't got, they ain't got to agree with your vision. They ain't got to see it from your point of view. If God said it, that's all that power because he's more than enough. I wish I had some Bible yeah, yeah, yeah. The angels that visited Abraham were also God's provision for Abraham's nephew named Lot. And both warned and rescued Lot from the impending devastation that, is, that unfolded in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And it is for this reason that scriptures teach us in Hebrews verse uh, chapter 13, verse 2, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. Oh, yeah. For by this, some have entertained angels without knowing. Yeah. 